I've always like considered like this balance in uh, blockchain security of between like you know Uber secure and accessibility on the other spectrum, where you know you're always balancing how accessible your keys are um, to how secure it is. You know, the most secure would just be a hardware wallet um, and uh, and like metal engraved uh, you know seed phrase that's like tucked away. Uh, or even like multi-sig and uh, Gnosis wallets, right? Like that's uh, that's like top security. And on yeah. the opposite spectrum, you have like just a, a 12 seed for, uh, phrase MetaMask wallet uh, that you keep on every device, including your phone to your uh, family's tablet, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, super accessible because it's always on hand, but it is going to be very vulnerable. Um, so I think that's a decision that every user makes where they stand like um, on that spectrum. Um, a year ago, when I was away with uh, other Hexkins in Mexico, I prioritized like, accessibility just because like I got up and went and um, I needed to have like my keys nearby. Um, but anyways, uh, move, you know, fast forward to now, um, basically was doing a lot of, a lot of transactions on Hot Wallet. Um, and um, that Hot Wallet was like on my you know, uh, work computer and gaming rig and phone. And uh, the reason why I needed that accessibility is because like I was managing LPs and, um, you know, accumulating and I wanted to, uh, you know, instead of market buying and selling, you know, LPing is just a little bit better because you avoid slippage and make fees. So it's a win-win. And um, just because I was constantly managing it, I wanted to do it on a hot wallet. Um, and uh, that ended up being hacked. So, so I'm here to recount how that happened and, and give you guys some tips uh, so you can learn from it. Um, it basically started off with uh, downloading um, an infected torrent. So like a lot of us you know, download torrents. Um, you want to obviously look for torrents by trusted users. Um, you want to, before you run anything you download from a torrent, you want to like upload it to like virus total to check whether there's any uh, binded Trojans and other malware. Uh, with that exe but essentially you know most viruses on computers they're going to be on windows and they're going to be binded with an executable file um, so though i know there's uh in the past there were vulnerabilities with like word files and pdfs i believe nowadays it's primarily just exe files so anytime you're executing an executable file you want to be extremely cautious that it's clean and the one night that I downloaded a torrent to a uh, editing software I needed, um, unfortunately, I was looking for a very specific version of it. And that's what led me to download a very a sketchy torrent because I needed a very specific version to match the plugins I needed to use. And mm-hmm. I ran, I downloaded the torrent. Um, I ran it. It uh, made my computer go weird for a second. Like it opened up Bing out of nowhere. And it didn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so clearly, it was infected. It's just that in the moment, I was like so hungry to like find the perfect torrent with the version I was seeking that I just moved on to the next one. And I didn't really think anything of it. But in hindsight, obviously, if, if you notice anything suspicious, um, try to disinfect your computer right away. Uh, download something like Malware Bytes, which is free and does a decent job at finding viruses. And perhaps have... Uh, antivirus software pre-installed on your computer. Um, I'm someone who's like been techie all my life. I work similar to you for a tech company, so I'm, I'm cognizant of these things. But even someone like myself, um, you know, you're you're going to be vulnerable at times. So because I didn't disinfect my computer, um, that left a virus on my computer that eventually led to getting hacked and losing my crypto. Um, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it sucks. So yeah. what happened is um, Papa B preaches the, uh, I think his top, like, uh, you know, the, the top thing he preaches is is be weary of key loggers, right? You don't want to input your keys ever into a keyboard, right? He, like, that's his whole thing. Like, never put your, you know, seed, your passwords, I mean, like crypto passwords in a keyboard. Right, you always want to interact with it, like analog with the with the hardware wallet. Yeah, um, so that's the problem. Wallet solves. You know, you get that 
that you don't have to touch a keyboard to type stuff in. Yeah. Um, and so the most common virus out there is a keylogger, right? You, you download a, a malware, uh, it's, you're technically infected with at least a keylogger. So something that's always tracking your keystrokes um, and, and, and kind of siphoning it off, right? It could be just sending it off to an FTP and then somebody's reviewing it and seeing what it's collected um, and then seeing what they can do with it. Um, now, besides that, there's other um, viruses. Um, I think the one thing that I, the, the, the missing puzzle piece, I think in, in Papa B's security speeches is sure keyloggers are scary, but you know, what's the difference if a hacker has your MetaMask password, right? He'd, he'd, he'd have to have access to your computer to actually input that password and drain your wallet. So what people overlook is that these viruses are often binded with a rat. Uh, there's different terms for it. Uh, back in the day, commonly known as, and as like a Trojan. And a rat would be a, a little file that's always working in the background. So if you go into your um, like task manager and you look at the processes, you'll see like a weird application always running. And essentially somebody has remote access to your computer. They have their own dashboard and they could have, and they have like really comprehensive control over your computer. Uh, they can oftentimes see your webcam. So besides a key logger, they have additional tools at their disposal to, to really, uh, you know, uh, wreck, wreck some havoc, right? They, they can do anything you can do at the computer. It's just remotely, as long as you're online, that that's yeah. all they need to do. And it's like you having remote access to your computer. Yeah. 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 Um, so the importance of, of why Papa B, you know, purchased the key logger is besides the key logger, there's often a rat involved. So if they have a record of the, the, your password, you know, next time you're away at your computer, you know, you step away for a minute to get, grab a coffee, you come back and they've noticed you've been away through your webcam. They take over your computer, they drain your hot wallet. So that's, that's the full, <laughs> that's the full picture of what happens. Um, right. And uh, I, um, yeah, so I was doing these transactions, it was, everything's was fine. And I was, it was like super convenient because I had my hot wallet everywhere. And one morning I wake up and the um, first thing I do, look at my limit orders, right? Uh, as uh, maybe a lot of people that are accumulating, right? You're wondering like, oh, did these crazy limit orders that I didn't expect to get hit, get hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, you check and you're like, oh, heck yeah, somebody filled these ridiculous orders. And um, so I go into my LP position on Uniswap um, where you can have like bids. And I, and I had like, um, I had like $20,000 worth that had a bid. I mean, I'll, I'll, throughout the story, I'll be very open with this because I've already docked my docked myself on telegram as I like, uh, sought out help. So I'll be like super transparent with like the values of everything. Um, whatever you're comfortable sharing, don't share more than you're yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've already, uh, on telegram, I've already gone back and forth on, in multiple groups, like doxing the wallet and stuff like that. Um, and I, and I think that the importance of my story should be emphasized with just the value of what was lost because it's, it's a significant high figure, high five figure sum. Um, so I woke up, uh, look at my phone cause I have my hot wallet on there and I see it, the bid was filled. Um, and I'm like, gee whiz, like, you know, who's, who's filling at these levels. Um, and I immediately like, uh, withdraw the LP to claim, uh, the tokens that I got. And while it's doing that, I uh, checked the blockchain. I already had all these things like queued up, you know, like a lot of people, they have all these tabs open, <laughs> the whole blockchain. Mm -hmm. So I had it queued up and I, um, I look at the transaction history and it was filled like shortly after I woke up or shortly before I woke up. Um, and then I click on the transactions to see like this cascading cell and it's my address on the blockchain and i'm like okay this doesn't make sense like how is how am i you know filling my own limit orders like who's you know so did, did you like, think at that point it was like uniswap some kind of contract bug or like you know wherever you were using it you thought that's be the first thing in my mind like, oh my gosh like what happened to the contract why is it doing this to me you know that kind of thing exactly they're like i had all these ideas of like a bug you know maybe like just i'm like loaded the web page wrong like how to make sense of my own wallets uh, you know mm -hmm. filling these positions um so then 
now, you know, as it's in the process of like, um, you know, getting withdrawn, I go back into MetaMask and then I look at my balances and I had a bunch of tokens in it and they're all changing. The balances of them are changing constantly. So like some are going up, some are down. I'm noticing the ETH is like going up, then coming down. So they're all like changing. It looks really weird. Um, and I'm like, okay, this must be like a bug. The blockchain is having a fit. Um, you know, and it can't be me. Like there's something going on with this application. Uh, so I get up and I, um, I really have two main computers. Like I have a, a Razer laptop and then I have like a gaming rig. And, um, and I figured out, I don't have time to like boot up the gaming rig with all the bells and whistles. I'll just run and get my Razer and boot that up because it's much quicker. Um, so I run over, get my laptop. Um, at that point, it's already too late. At that point, it's already happened. Um, so, so now recapping, um, I'm now I'm a laptop looking at the ether scan, trying to investigate why the balance changes and, and what's going on. And on ether scan, it's, you know, clear as day that, that, um, within just a few minutes, um, um, um you know, someone had, um, sold everything on Uniswap, like all the liquid tokens and, transferred out the ETH to themselves. So I see the same address. Mm -hmm. um, the address ends in C4, which is like a, a common term for like dynamite and like explosives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was ironic. Uh, there's, you're going to find yeah. a lot of coincidences in my story. It, it'll be interesting because besides this, it's going to get a lot more interesting um, with these weird coincidences. Um, and yeah, so I see that it was all transferred out. It was 35 ETH um, pretty much like to, to the dot. That was transferred out, which uh, back then, like a month ago, that was about sixty-two thousand USD. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, that means like yeah. that. That's like different to different people. For me, that's a, a decent chunk of my portfolio. It's not all of it, because luckily it's staked. <laughs> so somebody would have had to really investigate where a lot of the value is. But everything liquid, um, you know, sixty-two thousand. Um, Luckily, like I'll get by, you know, I'll survive. It's it's definitely a step back, but you know, I'll make it through. You don't want to be in the position where you know it, everything's taken from you and you regret it. So again, take your security seriously. Listen to the lessons we're gonna have at the end of the story. Hmm. Um, um, so that I'm in shock. I mean, I can't describe the the feeling you have in your stomach when you like witness your hot wallet getting drained and these balances just changing and then coming to the realization of what happened. I, I don't wish that feeling out to anybody. And um, it, it was really, really uncomfortable. Um, so then, and then I'm like thinking in my head, okay, how could have this happen? Cause I know where my seat is for this particular wallet. There's no way they would have got it. Um, so I'm thinking, how was I compromised? And, and so then, I mean, the, the, the kind of, the vector, the attack vectors that are possible is they either have your, um, sorry, uh, they either have your seed and then they can remotely sign in and drain your MetaMask, or they would have to have, uh, you know, remote access to your hot wallet via computer to drain it. So once I realized it wasn't my seed that was compromised, it was my computer, I ran back to my rig, it was turned on. And it was like, it was like a, it looked like a set of a massacre, <laughs> you know, it looked like it was mm. just drained, like, like windows everywhere. Like somebody actually took control of the mouse and, and, and did everything. Mm. Um, so, so now that's pretty much the end of the story, right? It, you know, drained wallet, but now let me back up and describe what actually happened in between uh, all the events. Sure. So, so since running that, uh, that infected torrent, um, there's but a, a one and a half to two day period where the hacker would have had to stock uh, the logs of whatever key logs or rats. And he through the, because essentially the log, a key logger log would, would kind of, um, it would note like the, the, the title of the tab you're clicking on, um, what the, the title of the program you're on. So it gives them a bit of a context of what you're kind of looking at. 
and then it would obviously have a, a record of the inputs of the keystrokes. Right. So they would have noticed that within that, you know, two day period that I would have signed into MetaMask and then they would have seen the recorded keystrokes for that MetaMask. So at that point, it was just a matter of time of stalking um, the computer um, until I was away and, um, and, then, and then getting a remote, uh, taking remote control of it. Now, you know, as a lot of people, they often put like a sticker over the webcams, very common mm -hmm. practice. Um, that's actually the reason why people do it, right? They cover up their webcams so that in these types of instances, um, the hacker, no one could spy on them. Obviously, they're thinking the NSA, but it's more likely right. a malicious actor um, that's, that's that has a, a virus on your computer. Yeah, you um, can buy all the like sliders to put on the webcams yeah. and stuff too. So there's yep. you know, the tape or sliders. Yeah. So one, so consider that. So if you want to be like really, you know, conscious of your security, it may be worthwhile to invest in that because in my case, I literally had my webcam, you know, propped up my rig like I have now, and it was just visible for the world to see. And, um, and that's how they were able to tell that, Hey, he's away from his computer. Now's my chance. Now, part of the virus, now you'd think, okay, well, how would they have they can't remotely uh boot up your rig right like it, it requires a physical input to turn on the electricity and get it going and even then wouldn't there be like a windows login screen that would have prevented getting access well part of the virus again a virus can be binded with like different um automated steps so once you execute it it could like trigger a series of automated events and Part of what was included with the virus is the um, it, it it killed the uh, the login screen on Windows Boot. So and and all it killed it so bad that afterward, like the first thing when I when I like during the recovery, uh, when I like followed the tutorial where you can customize your password, those settings were literally blank. So however they did it. The virus like wiped. So I, you know, if, basically what I did is like you run CMD, and you can do MS config, and then you get like very specific settings to your machine, and and when you go to the startup tab, th the actual setting that is asking for, um, you know, that's requiring like a login, is blank. Like that's how crazy it is that they were able yeah. to wipe that entire step of the boot process. Um, I found a different tutorial of how you can still force it. So now, like I didn't wipe my computer. Um, I, I'll let you know how I got rid of the virus, but um, I, um, I I found the setting of how you can still force. Uh, there's a different way to really force um, a password on login. Um, I, I would, I would, and just putting my security professional hat on here uh, for a minute too, I would recommend you wipe it and just take off all only the files you need because a lot of these, their remote access, viruses, malware, whatever you want to call it, um, they can be even more sticky. Like they can like literally get into your bio sure. settings. They yeah. can like get super deep in the system where antiviruses and otherwise they just can't find them because that's what they're really good at. That's how they're so successful is, is evading and, and, uh, and working really well to the multi-steps as you described. So I would recommend like what I would do in, in that case, I would just like take only the important files don't take any, I wouldn't take any EXEs, anything that they may have Trojaned or, or otherwise, because, you know, that, that's, that's a possibility too, and put it on a completely clean machine and then, uh, and then set up your security and, and your fortress from there. But man, there's so many different ways. And I posted this link too, because I just had a few comments on this because when I did the security AMAs, I've covered a lot of stuff too, but just doing like a, a retrospective from, from your story and what I've heard a lot of things too, that. Uh, for example, you mentioned Windows, and that's one thing I talk about all the time is if you want really good security and you don't want to be part of the 99% of people who who have problems in that direction, yeah. a Mac can remove it removes you from that. It, it, you, it's like it's like driving down the really nice street and driving down the, the really shady street. Like which one are you more likely to get you know, robbed or, or have some kind of problem in? So using a Mac removes all the EXEs. There's no EXEs on Mac. They don't work. And there's there's different executable type stuff, but they're not EXEs that you're not going to get targeted like you would on Windows. So that's one. If you, if you can use a Mac, if you can use Linux, um, all that removes you from all of the world of Windows malware. 
And then uh, the other thing is if, the good thing about Mac too, for, for me, I don't think you even need an antivirus on Mac because it already has a lot of built-in stuff that mm -hmm. it knows how to do security for. Mm -hmm. And even on Windows, you know, it's Windows Defender. To me, I don't, I've never bought a third-party antivirus since I've been, I don't use Windows much anymore, but mm -hmm. on my Windows machines, I don't use third-party. I only mm -hmm. use Windows Defender and make sure it's, it's up to date mm -hmm. because I, they, they have like a world-class security team and it's built into like they're doing all the stuff that that all the other ones can do. You know, everyone has their niches, the different vendors, but the built in antivirus for the latest versions of Windows is actually really good and has a lot of good features. So as long as you keep it up to date, that's the, that's the key point on that. And, I totally go ahead. Yeah, I agree with the Mac. Um, there's a stat 90% um, of malware is specifically on Windows OS in the world, like worldwide stat. Yes, yes. It is because that's the most people. If you're think about if you're a malware author and you want to get people seeds, you want to do all this stuff, you're going to target the platform that people are using. And 99% of people, I, I just, you know, I throw that number out there, are you, the encrypted, for example, are using Windows. So why would you even think about Mac? You're going to get much more. If you're going fishing, you're going to go fishing with a bait that's going to catch you the most fish, not the one that's going to catch some, some yeah. rare fish that may or may not even, you know, ha have more dollars than the other fish, for example. Um, and I posted, uh, this link too that I cover, I want to bring because you mentioned virus total, and that is something that profoundly helpful, mm -hmm. profoundly helpful for people to use. You don't even need to download if you're suspicious about a link. Yep. You don't even need to download it and try to run it and go through all that stuff. Uh, if you're going to do that, by the way, virtual machine, another way to make sure that's separate from your own computer. That's another thing you can do to help with it. But with virus total, <clears throat> and I'll just, you know what, I'll bring it up too. I got it. it I, I, I posted it. Okay. Oh, oh, I was going to bring it up on the on the browser so I could just like show people um, like what you, yeah. So here, let's do virus total.com. If you're just suspicious about some EXE or suspicious about a URL, even you can just type it in here. You give it to them and you either upload the file uh, after you downloaded it, but you haven't ran it yet. You downloaded it, but you haven't, haven't ran the EXE. You upload it here. And they'll check like 50, 60, 100 different antiviruses and see if they, you get any hits for any viruses or anyone's reported it. It's kind of like crowdsourced intelligence for doing it. So it removes you having to run and figure out it's bad or not and get yourself in all that. You just upload the virus total before you run any EXE mm -hmm. or throw the URL to that EXE in here. Because there's a lot of, you know, you want to go download a wallet and a lot of wallets are on GitHub or they're on the official website and all the attackers, they try to use all these tricks of like, oh, but here's the link to the beta version that's got all these new features and they try to trick you into getting theirs. If someone's reported it as being malicious, you type the URL in there, it'll tell you if anyone's uh, said anything bad about it. So virus total is fantastic. Um, that's, I, I've put this in my blog that I wrote last year. It, it does all the stuff for you. It, it'll save you a lot of headaches if you use that beforehand. Um, and I got stuff about phishing and, and the usefulness of VPNs and stuff too. VPNs will not protect you from getting hacked. If you had a VPN, State Wealth, would you be hacked right now? Yeah, for sure. It they do nothing against it. Like that's yeah. it's like the biggest misconception in in the whole industry. It's like the VPNs they are for privacy. They are for changing your IP address. And there's I've covered it, covered this a thousand times too. There's a bunch of different ways to do that other than paying a monthly subscription for a VPN. I'm not saying they're useless. I'm saying they they, they don't protect you from getting hacked. That's that's my VPN yeah. point. Um, I've seen, what else? Go ahead. I've seen streamers use VP, VPS on their uh, during streams. So a virtual machine, I think, is another good suggestion. Um, you can have like a machine within a machine. So yes. you can turn on your Windows or a Mac, and you can uh, then boot up uh, another instance, an isolated instance of an operating system. Um, like you have another version of Windows boot up, and that's where you keep your... MetaMask. Exactly. Yeah. A virtual machine. That's it's basically, yeah, like you said, a computer within a computer. Yeah. And if something wrong happens with that, then it's not going to affect your real computer because uh, you're, you're literally just, you're using another computer, but it's just, like, it's just a window, just like your web browser is, but it's another computer inside yours. It, it sounds complicated, but it's like the most simple thing. If you, if you want to go that route as well, you just install windows or whatever you want on it and use that for all your risky type of applications. Um, i trying to think what else is, what else lessons to, to get from this, because this is a very important story. And 
it could happen to anyone. Um, anyone running Windows? I'll, I'll throw that out there. Um, yeah. Let's get on the Mac bandwagon, everyone. Go buy a MacBook today. That's what I, that's what I recommend. And a treasure. <laughs> well, and a treasure. Have a, yes. I have a. I think the well, when I posted this in Telegram, people are saying that. The, at least in their case, they have dedicated computers. Like have like a dedicated computer that you don't download anything on and just use crypto. That's another thing. Well, so there's trade-offs for that too. Of course, yes. But so everything in security is a balance between flexibility and safety, right? You you can do all these things, and but you're never going to be able to you know get in and out of positions without having to spend your morning figuring this stuff out or or mm -hmm. undoing all, you know uh, unlocking all the stuff and, and getting it all there. The good thing about hardware wallets, and I think in the future, there won't be like, there'll be like, I could see when you download MetaMask, you know, you already have a hardware wallet. Like you can't even use MetaMask without one because it, it it's one of the most like common sense things. It just takes time to set up and you got to use it and you got to, uh, you know, there, there's other things with hardware wallets too, but it's, it's just one of those things that just makes sense. You don't want to use your keyboard because if you are key logged, yeah. uh, it's kind of a two factor auth on your crypto type of thing uh it's they're great so um, well look if metamask just had 2fa this would have not happened and and when i brought that up in the security chat they were they were saying there's rumblings of richard's wallet potentially having 2f multi-factor authentication well the the 2fa and metamask is is at a conceptual level again mm -hmm. just so my security brain here mm -hmm. just thinking of like software development and security and what kind of application MetaMask is. It's it's one of those things, okay, so now we saw with um, Infura and MetaMask, you know, denying access to Venezuela and censorship and all this stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, if they start adding 2FA, like how much, how much do we want them to, how much do right. we not want MetaMask to be just the wallet that we use? Right. How much do we want them to be the custodian? Right. So I think that's the, that's the line of like, okay, Maybe, uh, you know, it's it, obviously it would be helpful if, if MetaMask had 2FA, but now are they going to be just like Coinbase one day that's going to keep adding features and, and, and it's, and you're going to be locked into their system. I kind of like MetaMask being naked, but I'm, you know, I'm the person who can, who, who can avoid these types of scenarios a lot of ways anyway, it's just because yeah. it's an always in the back of my mind and that's what I do professionally. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the only thing I would say with MetaMask 2FA, it, it feels like they're getting more involved in your in your centralized uh, custodian stuff with that, although obviously good for security. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, so jumping back just to finish off the story. Um, so, so the, my computer, so, so the, why was my computer even on? Right. Um, so, so funny thing about my rig, um, the power supply is like um, not the proper one for my motherboard. So the power supply, I think is a little bit overpowered. And it's very sensitive. So any little bit of like current uh, will, will just boot up the computer. So I very often throughout the week, it does boot up on its own. I've never like, I mean, in retrospect, I should have like fixed that. But basically, it's like a, it's a ghost. There's like a phantom <laughs> computer. It boots up mm -hmm. on its own whenever it senses a little bit like extra current. And that's why it was on part of the virus, bypassed the Microsoft uh, login screen. And with them noticing that I was away via webcam, it was a perfect storm and a perfect opportunity to just take over. That's what I was going to, there's a couple other points I had too on that. So they don't even need to see that they could have used a webcam for this, but they can just tell based on your activity. So there's like timers and stuff on yeah. operating system on Windows. Okay. So they could even tell if you're away from your keyboard for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That was probably, I suspect that was built into the malware already. But of course they could have turned a webcam on and, 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 and saw that as well. Uh, and then the other point was uh, the power. So part of the package, I speculate with malware, was it's able to, you know, they're able to press a button and it's like, oh, the computer's asleep. Let's wake it up. They had control over the power, uh, the power cycle, the power timer. If it's if mm -hmm. it went to sleep, as long as it's not completely off, right. I think they could press the button to, I agree. you know, give it that give it that ghost and turn it back on. I agree. So we talk about the same thing about okay. I'm thinking about how it was, how I speculate it's designed, and those all all those features make sense to me because it's technically possible to do that stuff. Yeah. What? Um. Okay. And now, how I got rid of the virus? So, yeah, I didn't wipe my system, but I I can recommend a really good antivirus software. It's called Hitman Pro. Um. I'll just post it in the chat. Um. I've had really good experiences 
uh, with this um, virus detecting and virus deleting program in the past. Um, and this one immediately picked up the malware and immediately erased it. Now, here's the crazy coincidence that, I mean, I want to judge how crazy you think it is. I think it's crazy. The virus was called wealth.exe. Like, yeah, I, I'm staking wealth. See. It's called wealth. <laughs> Interesting. So I wonder how... If they, they could have because you, know, you download the torrent, what kind of torrent yeah. were you downloading? Did you do you say that? I might have forgot. You just got a, a editing software. Editing software. Yeah. So but, on your so, on the on your computer is your username wealth or no something? no no it's it's absolutely not. So he could have named it anything, and then if you go into your task manager and you go to processes, it would have always been uh, wealth.exe running in the background. So this guy could have named it super like uh, discreet. He named it wealth.exe. And he hacked staked wealth with wealth.exe to steal wealth. I, like, yeah, interesting. Am I the only I, one? That could, <laughs> could be a, a coincidence. Or so, when you download the torrent, was it yeah. wealth.exe in the torrent? No, no, no. It was like a, a setup.exe. What you would right. usually see with the editing software install. I, I, so I suspect on that one that he probably used maybe. Maybe you your is your username wealth on anything? Like anything? It's not. Any, it's not. Like I, I've had virus. Hmm. I've, I've deleted viruses in the past. They always have like different names. They, they it's up to their discretion what they can name it. They can bind hmm. it with the software, so the software can remain set up that exe, but it then executes other uh, programs. Um, he could have named it anything, and he named it wealth. Yeah. Exe. I I think so. In that case, so there's two different ways. Two two different things that I would think could happen with that. One, there is usually a list of random, ge randomly generated names that after you run exe, setup.exe, now it's going to be like, it could have been, you know, uh, cup.exe or uh, update.exe. Usually it's like update.exe because that's when you see update.exe in your test manager, you're like, oh, that's just something running update. I don't care about that, right? It's trying to hide. Funny enough, using wealth, that could have been a random word picked from somewhere or it could have looked at your files. It could have like scanned for txt files or documents or or pulled a username from somewhere but if, if that's not the case and I, I suspect it pulled something from somewhere to make it look familiar to you even I though if i if i saw something like max.exe i'd be like whoa that's not i don't why would why would there be anything like that so no it, it's honestly a crazy coincidence, it, 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 coincidence? It could oh, be. You trust me they can name it it's, it's up to their describe they can name it anything they want and like i said i've this program has cleaned past viruses and they've always had different names uh, they've never been wealth. Um, so. Interesting. Congrats to Paul Sachs, by the way, for using Linux. Uh, and that's the scariest word in everyone's mind who's general general uh, user out there. But uh, if you want to be, so if, if Windows puts you in the 99% of getting hit by a bus, and, and uh, figuratively speaking, and Mac is the 1%, use Linux, maybe you'll be in the 0.1% because there ain't nobody writing viruses uh, unless you're unless you're very targeted for, for Linux. So Mac yeah. or Linux, so good stuff yeah. on that. Um, uh, Paul's other comment about Bitwarden, I don't know how that would have prevented the keylogger. Um, Let's see. Bitwarden is just a password manager where you could keep your keys. But uh, I mean, obviously, you know, well, here's another story. So um, in August, uh, big story, I'm sure you've heard of it, like LastPass had a breach. Mm hmm. Yeah, so LastPass, same as Bitwarden. I mean, I think I, I think the difference with Bitwarden, it's a local, um, it's a local uh, password manager. But programs like One Password and LastPass are common password managers. Um, I had some keys actually. I mean, again, uh, idiot. But I had some keys stored on LastPass again because who would think like you buy a premium membership on a, a, to a company that's sole purpose is to secure passwords and then they get breached. And, uh, it's ironic, I know, man. I know. Yeah, there's so much irony in this. I, and I, I, just, just FYI, I do not use any online password services. For that fact, I know yeah. they will eventually get hacked. I know I don't want to be on that list. I don't want to get the stuff. So, but again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not your average. I'm your, I'm been doing security for over a decade professionally. So it's like I know that these guys are not going to keep my stuff safe. And the best way to do it for that is a local password manager and backup the the database and stuff on you know some some thumb drive and, and protect it with a really good password 
just like MetaMask type of thing. Yeah. Uh, but your password manager. And so I don't trust any of the online services. FYI. Exactly. Especially don't, I mean, the other thing is don't reuse passwords because a, like a lesser known website, you use the, you reuse a password on gets hacked and then they just like brute force every other service with those credentials. So use unique passwords, um, preferably strong passwords that are auto generated. Um, yeah, keep them somewhere safe. In my case, at this point, like I've been hacked from every direction at this point, I've given up and just assume that at some point, like throughout the next few decades, like every every account I have is, is going to be is is going to be breached one well, way or another. I'll tell you how to stop that too. Two FA. Use Google. <laughs> Don't use the SMS type. Use the uh, authenticator of yep. some sort. Use some authenticator app, whether it's Google or Okta or whatever it is. Yep. And it, even if they, that's the whole point of it is even if they steal your password or guess it or whatever, or fish it, then they can't, they can't get in your account if you have 2FA turned on. So that's what I would yep. say for that. Yeah, I got, but look, I had 2FA on last pass and it's, uh, it's irrelevant because when they, uh, they, again, they got, they got, they got the, they copied a database of all encrypted vaults via a senior devs, uh, computer. So they got a rat on senior dev um and he was one of the four that had access to all their encrypted vaults they copied the vaults and now 2fa is irrelevant as they brute force all the vaults offline that's a great point yeah 2fa only protects you from external people getting access to your account if the company itself gets hacked and and to the to the max level the max level is like you know they get access to the encrypted vaults and that's supposed to be encrypted and, and all these layers yeah. of protection and only certain yeah. people are supposed to have it yeah, that two FA doesn't protect you against that that attack service. But as far as yourself, assuming the company doesn't get hacked, two FA protects you. Like that. Yeah, it's a great point. To, that's uh, yeah, it's good one to bring up. Yeah, on, on the web, like you just gotta embrace. Like you wanna, I mean, you, anywhere you keep money, that should be your top priority of securing your bank accounts. I mean, what's funny is like a hacker gets access to my computer, they don't go for your bank accounts they don't go for the paypal because those are reversible right there's there's like there's logs they go for crypto so your top priority should be encrypting your crypto that's where you keep like irl value and like the person says like imagine the x's on the 35 ETH that was stolen right at the bottom of the bear so yeah so keep sorry man. that sucks well, so here's the bright side of the story. So they took... Pulse Chain's launching this year. That's the bright side. You're going to get it back. You're going to get it back 10 times fold, right? Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Well, um, well, here's the bright side of the story. So sure, they drained the the liquid tokens in the hot wallet in a matter of minutes. Uh, what they didn't touch are the stakes. So I had a stake due on Tuesday this week. And... I uh, touched. I got in contact with. Uh, shout out to Poseidon. He's an administrator under the Hex Security Telegram group. Again, shout out if anyone in the Hex community needs a device, go to t.me backslash Hex Security. Um, the administrator there, Poseidon, uh, was able to grab his you know attention, and he he with his help, I was able to confirm that the hacker didn't have my seed and didn't have a, a, a flash bot on the account right so here, here's why, the next why wouldn't they dump your seed from your metamask like, exactly like the first thing i would do exactly exactly i mean this this guy was a pro because he quickly like picked up on it drained it moved it out but he wasn't that pro because what he should have done is in again i hate this vulnerability in in metamask you can go to settings and you can reveal seed and the only yep. thing you need is that metamask password so this is why papa bt preaches to you guys don't use don't input your password don't use because uh, it, it'll be key logged and then um, from because you think okay cool they get access to my metamask it's empty other than the stakes well they can reveal the seed phrase via the metamask password copy the seed phrase and then for the next 15 years you know a scrape a scrape your hex stakes so hmm. um, so he didn't he didn't do that um, obviously he only had a matter of minutes um, but uh, and then I clean and then I wiped everything. Um, but he, what he should have done is just 
got the seed and then worried about it on his own time. So the vulnerability there, again, for because we're getting pretty advanced with this, we're having a pretty good advanced conversation. So the next layer on is flashbots. If someone has your seed phrase, they can run an Ethereum node and constantly ping to your address to identify whether there's any value, whether anything has been sent in, and what and if anything's been sent into your address or an end or end state, you know, they can they'll they'll immediately scrape it off to themselves. And it's all automated. So they're called flashbots. And you can look up how to be protected against flashbots, but it's very difficult. And if you were, mm. were to run your own node, because I'm I was thinking of doing that for the keys I had uh, that were breached in the last pass. Um, you have to constantly run a node, and it's still a 50-50 chance which flashbot's gonna um, scrape. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know about flashbots. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, Richard talks about it in the streams. He often mentions flashbots. Um, well, not I maybe mean, not often, but uh, but he Richard he, streams. He, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. He's, well, in the past, he's mentioned uh, flashbots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like Richard streams. Like I haven't seen him do a stream in like a year uh, at the throne, at least at uh, the castle. But uh, yeah. for us hexagons, we just rewatch the soap opera, right? Like, what do we need new episodes for? We go back. You don't have to tell me. I've been. Yeah. I've, I've, I've Especially got, you. I've got. I've got vintage clips coming out until twenty twenty five. So I, I've yeah. been watching some. I've been watching a lot of Richard lately. Uh, yeah. Bobby Hex around. Not super techy. You're saying partition hard drives. Uh, no. You just need, so you can run MetaMask on any browser that supports MetaMask on any operating system that supports that browser. So on Mac, you can use Chrome, Firefox, and you set up MetaMask, and now you have MetaMask on Mac, and you, you're in the 1% of not getting hacked. That, I guess that was my point. And if you had another question from that, let me know. But you need another computer. You can't run Windows and Mac natively on the same computer. They're different hardware, different stuff like that. Right. So... I got the help of a hexagon, Poseidon. Shout out! Um, shout out, again, Poseidon! Uh, again, a uh, uh, again another emphasis on how helpful and how active our community is in a sea of just graveyards and and dead wrecked plebs. Dude, great community, great. Yeah. Lots of people know about security. I'm gonna get Papa B preaching the Mac, uh, the Mac and Linux uh, train at some point too. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he already does. Maybe he just doesn't want to reveal it for OPSEC. So maybe. Yeah. Uh, Archie said I downloaded a VM, but my old computer doesn't work with it. You download a VM. So there's VM software, and then there's VMs you can make or download to run on your computer with that software. So if you're saying I downloaded, a, I don't know which one you're saying, but uh, I don't. Maybe just I guess if you need to upgrade your computer because you need memory, you need to set aside because you're running another computer within a computer. So you're going to have to dedicate a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of hard disk space, all that to to get it to work. And then uh, believe in yourself, forgot about running VM, old computer, server chip. Yeah, if you have a server, you can set up, I don't want to get into all like, the super technical part of this, but you can set up like a VM server and then yeah. you, you just get on that web UI and spin up as many VMs as you want if you have like a Dell rack or something like that. And that's called the VPS. I've had VPSs. In, you can rent a VPS from a host. Oh, right? I'm talking about something different. So VPS is like when you, easy to cloud computer, Sure. Any any server you rent, you rent yeah. remotely, you pay for. I'm talking yeah. about you can actually, if you buy like a Dell rack, like a T T132 okay. or something, in your house, you can set okay. up a VM server that you can yeah. run multiple virtual machines on. And it, so you don't need an old computer; you just need a, a rack right. server. But yeah, you can totally VPS. Uh, you can you can rent uh, time from AWS uh, or time from any cloud provider to to yeah. do your own virtual virtual machine and what it looks like on their back end. Yeah, is, probably is crazy it's just. Too. It's just expensive if you get a private one. So then you end up getting a shared and you don't know how secure the shared one is. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, there's, yeah, the, the shared ones. Well, there are mostly all the VMs you get are shared unless you pay a lot more for the other ones. Right. But Pro as, as a, you know, as a security person, I would say even the shared ones, modern tech, modern isolation technology is pretty good. Okay. So I wouldn't personally, so I wouldn't do anything so sensitive that I wouldn't trust the cloud that I would do in a cloud. If it's extremely sensitive, mm. I would just do it locally. I would never use a cloud provider for. Right. So if you use that bar, then yep. the isolation technology, I think it's good enough for whatever I want to trust it to do to do. But if it's like top secret, <laughs> never want anyone to see this, don't use the cloud because you know, at the end of the day, not your computer. Yeah. What's up, Chad? So Godfather, so yeah. yes, do it. Do it. Be on the Mac. I need to get more people getting Macs. 
Yeah. More max, less hacks. Boom! I just, I just coined it. I just coined it. There's, yeah, nine keys, nine coins. That's the second best no. one. No yeah. Mac, you're getting hacked. Boom! Yeah. Oh, I'll just keep going today. Go, there you go. ahead. You were saying something. Though? Um, well, yeah. So I got the help of this hexkin who was able to confirm there's no flash bots on my um, on my uh, on that hot wallet. Um, now that a stake had come due, so this week I was successfully able to end stake and transfer it off. I just have a single stake left on that particular address. Uh, that's also going to be due soon, and uh, and then I'll get it off. But that was another big concern of mine, right? Of being stressed, stressing over whether somebody has a seed to your account because again, crypto, um, not like your pa PayPal password or another institution. It's just the pr you have a permanent you know, uh, permanent seed phrase, uh, that if it's ever, uh, compromised, it's just, that's the end. So that's a good point too. Other than <laughs> native stakes, have you transferred or do you plan on transferring all the other stuff that was left on there to somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. Like as soon as the hack happened, he, he took <clears throat> everything of value, but I had, uh, I had HSIs, uh, on there. I had uh, <clears throat> the stakes. Uh, one of them came due. One of them was left, uh, and uh, and I had LPs. Which again, so again, these things are uh, another like additional layers of protection um, that they're hard to kind of find, other than really snooping in the ether scan. We're glad Hex isn't uh, dominating the world right now because he didn't know how to use HSIs or or emergency in stakes. So it's one good thing about this, I guess. Well, on the topic of HSIs, I am such a like this. This hack has made me such a big believer in it that um, right now, well, part of my accumulation strategy is to accumulate as many T-shirts as I have um, in some of the compromised um, seeds in the last pass in H in HSIs. Uh, so big buyer of HSIs. Uh, big fan of them, and especially in uh, times like this, where I had I had a handful of HSIs on that particular wallet, I can now get them off. Uh, you know, well, uh, you know, if there's still a flash bot, like if there was a flash bot, if I here's the issue, if I had sent in ETH, like if I sent in like gas to make that to pull off the HSIs, if there was a node running and and pinging that address, they would have just scraped off that that ETH. So that's also part of the risk. So you, you obviously don't want to be compromised because even if you had HSIs, it, they could be like trapped. Uh, but in my case, they just took whatever was liquid. I, I still have, um, uh, you know, access so I can take the HSIs and go elsewhere.